you have to be willing to believe that you've done enough hard work, you know? And like, that was one of the, there were two affirmation that affirmations that really helped me. And one was, you know, I am not here to only do hard work. You know, I am here to live an easeful life, you know? And then one other one given to me by a friend of mine named Orla was you are very easy to love. Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hi, Kat. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. And Kat is someone that I've admired from afar. (laughs) When I first met her, I met her through a human design training that I'm doing, and she's always had this very authentic genuine energy I don't know how else to describe it but there's just something about you and then I found out that you're an artist you're a singer you do so many amazing things so I'm excited to interview you today go super deep but before we get to the good part (laughs) tell us about yourself who is Kat yeah hi (laughs) thanks for having me um I do human design. I do astrology. I am a death worker in training, which I'm particularly jazzed about. (laughs) Um, I do music. I do art of many different kinds. A mother, you know. (laughs) A lot of the work that I do with people is kind of in, in the healing sector. I used to do a lot of trauma work that's kind of shifting into along with me into a space of like, okay, like you've worked on this healing a lot. And now who are you now? Can you set that down? That's kind of where I'm at now. So. (laughs) Oh, can you tell me a little bit about the journey? Because I appreciate you bringing this forward about this is what I used to do, but as I've healed, as I've grown, I find myself gravitating towards something different and just that single sentence was like so permission granting for anybody who's listening. I feel like we need to do something for 30 years and, you know, we're an expert in this field, so we shouldn't try to do anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll preface by saying like, I'm never going to turn away a client that's still in that space, you know, because that's still something I'm very familiar with and I understand very well. But for me, I just finished four years of pretty intensive trauma therapy. I was doing EMDR um, and also somatic therapy. I tried art therapy. I did acupuncture. I tried like fucking anything I could think of to um, heal myself. And I started to notice that it was, it was feeling like almost something I had to feel after so much work on it. Like, it took me a while to really become aware of this, that I was starting to, instead of genuinely still be feeling these trauma feelings and these like dark emotions that I really had to work through, I was starting to like fall into this pattern of like habitually feeling that way instead, or like being there because it was expected of me to be that like, okay, we're going to be, you know, real sad girl hours over here, you know? And there's just, there's just such a subtle difference between when that is coming out of me authentically and when that's coming out of me because I feel like I have to be there. Mm -hmm. And it felt like maybe a month-ish ago, all of a sudden something just like clicked into place. It felt like all of this like deep trauma from my childhood just like integrated. And (laughs) it was after I had a doctor's appointment that really pissed me off because I've been trying to like treat this autoimmune stuff for a long time. And most of my doctors have basically either told me nothing was wrong or that it was because I was overweight or, you know, like any number of things that just like 
made it clear to me that they weren't really listening. And in one of my own podcast episodes, I was like, LOL, I'm just going to start thinking myself well as joke, right? And then I like got off that podcast episode and I was like, now, wait a minute. I'm just going to try that out. I'm going to just try it out. I'm going to think, I'm going to believe that I feel well. And um, I always like to mention that like, this is, there's so much nuance here because I never want to make someone who is ill feel like it is their fault or that they're just not thinking positively enough. Yes. You know, like, can we go there, please? This <laughs> it's is not what... that. Exactly. Like, oh, like this is like bringing me life. <laughs> this, this is a part of the wellness industry that I struggle with the most. Like mm-hmm. I became a health coach, of, I don't know, seven years ago because I was trying to understand my own health. But yeah. then it became toxic because it became about the reason you're feeling all this illness is because you didn't process your traumas because you, and you know, it gets to that place. Mm-hmm. And okay, let's say that you are dealing with it, you're healing. At what point do you integrate just like what you shared? And yeah. oh, can you t- tell us a little bit about your journey? Of Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I tried for so long to go the medical route and to like, do that piece of it because I was like clearly something is manifesting physically there must be something physically wrong but over and over nobody could find anything now if I look at my astrology chart and you know for anybody listening who knows astrology I'm a Placidus girl so I look at it in Placidus I use whole sign too but like whatever if you look at it in Placidus all of my personal planets are in the 12th house 12th house Mm -hmm. is like things that are unseen it's like the tra- one of the trauma houses it's like you know spirituality and like you know just shit that you can't see yourself very well if you look at my sixth house of health which is right across from it empty nothing in there <laughs> that doesn't mean that like nothing is going on if, in your sixth house if you have no planets but for me looking at that seeing the heavy concentration in this house it's very psychological it's very you know like misty and mysterious and seeing nothing in the sixth house after so long of trying to get something taken care of medically, I was like, this is not medical. This is like, this is a spiritual problem. And I believe that a lot of it is also ancestral shit that I am just the person to be, (laughs) to be stopping, to saying no more, we're not doing that. You know, so after so long and after just feeling, waking up that one day and being like, something is different in my body today. I don't know how to explain it. I just all of a sudden felt like, something just got like knocked into place. I was like, all right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to think myself well. I'm not going to share it yet because I don't want to make anybody feel any type of way. Because for me, it did work. But that doesn't mean that if somebody is ill, they're not thinking positively enough. There is so much nuance there. Like, I would, you could, you wouldn't go up to somebody who has cancer and be like, gee, if only you were happier, it would go away. Oh. Like, fuck off. <laughs> you know, I'm like, no. Like, yeah, it doesn't work. And you have to be ready for it. That's the thing. I think that's sometimes we go through the healing ourselves and it's such a personal journey. We don't know how long it's going to last. Some people, maybe they're good after one session of therapy. Other people, they want that support all their lives. There's nothing wrong with either of that. But like the nuance yeah. is the part that gets missed. Like mm-hmm. last year, I think, because I didn't deal with my mindset, I was like moving through a lot of fear of like thinking I wasn't good enough and like not being able to start the things I wanted to start and holding on to a part of me that my body was flaring out, was breaking out. I got eczema all of a sudden. And it was, it's just, and it's just like my, I almost lost my entire hand. Like I was so close to chopping it. Like it was that bad. Damn. And I did, I went to all the medication, like holistic ones. So I didn't want to take steroids. Again, steroids work for some people. I wanted to try something different at that moment. Mm-hmm. And then I got lost in a trap of like, what is wrong with me? Those are all the things that are wrong with me. This is all the things I have to do to heal. If I don't do it, then that's why I'm getting worse. No, yeah. like everything is yeah. so interconnected. And then mm-hmm. it got to a point where through the healing mindset, I was, I'm like, you know what? I don't need them anymore. They, they serve me all the Chinese medication, all the acupuncture, all the uh, psychotherapy help right now at this point. I don't need it. I was ready to piece of that story, but it mm-hmm. took me a time to get to that. And it's so personal for some people. It might take years and you cannot force somebody to say, think yourself well. So 
sometimes yeah. we do have the power when it clicks and it's so powerful when you and that's the thing that. too because when I first started to feel really terrible I tried that approach then didn't work you know because I hadn't done the trauma healing and I hadn't got that like there was a few things like my iron just all of a sudden decided to leave my body <laughs> after like many years of giving blood and having people be like wow your iron is amazing just one day my iron was like we'll see you have a good one so I did have to get like an iron infusion but beyond that there were no medical problems but if I hadn't gone through the path that I was led to by like from the unseen forces of the world you know I wouldn't have gotten here to where deciding that I feel well and deciding that my body is coming into alignment with my spirit, you know, that wouldn't have worked. It's only working now because of all that other shit. Yeah. Because of all the years of healing that you've done in the other parts. Mm -hmm. that, I love this nuance because it can be taken so out of context, but thank you for going there, frankly. And I, we started yeah. like deep right away. <laughs> and it's <Yeah>. so important. <laughs> it's really present for me right now. And I think that like, it can be difficult to set specifically this story down because it became such a part of my identity to be the trauma gal, to be the person that was ill, you know, like all of these things became parts of me to be the person that was tired, to be the person, you know, like all of these things. It was like, I realized that my mental landscape, which naturally when I was younger was like, <laughs> I think it's gonna be a great day you know like very very positive like almost nauseously so had turned into this place where it was like I am sick I'm never getting better this is my whole life you know like and these are the things that I'm repeating to myself and repeating so much that I didn't even notice I was doing that anymore mm. and then I was like oh shit this is one of the biggest problems now <laughs> and I need to like switch that around and so I picked back up my like affirmation notebook and I wrote over and over and over again, you know, I am healthy. <laughs> I, I took lyrics from that one song, you know, I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am rich. Yes. I am that bitch, you know, like literally over and over and over and over again. Um, you know, and just little things too, like my husband and I have a lot of fun together, you know, because all of these beliefs about myself were seeping into parts of my life, right. As they do. And for a good chunk of time when I was in that deep trauma work, I wrote off all that stuff. I was like, this is bullshit. This is bypassing. This is like, I don't think any of this has use. I think it's all like stupid and wrong, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and now I've come way back full circle and I'm like, okay, both and. Yes. Both and. Yes. You know? It's not one or the other. Oh, I'm just loving all of this so much because I struggle so much to Yes, there were times that when I was in my burnout that I was the sick person. I was the person that needed additional care and support. But I kept reliving that role even when I was doing the things that was getting it better and I couldn't let go of that role. And yep. it takes, as long as it takes, you have to get to that place yourself. Doesn't mean it will work for you know, anybody, but the work that happens when we're not trying to do the work it almost, this is almost like the most magical part because a part of me is also like, yes, I can do all those things to take care of myself, but also I'm here to live life. Like I don't have to try so hard. It became a chore. Like, what do I eat? Like, I can't eat anything. I'm going to, like, my hands are not going to be able to move. And like, it just became so, I was like really traumatizing myself and being very afraid to live. Yeah. Because you get caught in that. And maybe when you were at that point, you needed those to cope. Mm -hmm. but when do you release that when do you yeah when do you release and shed that and integrate mm -hmm. uh, all of it all of it thank you <laughs> yeah you know and some people say you know well you just have to get tired of your own shit and like well I totally understand the sentiment of that and that might be how it feels for some people for me it just kind of felt like you have to be willing to believe that you've done enough hard work mm. you know and like that was one of the, there were two affirmation that affirmations that really helped me. And one was, you know, I am not here to only do hard work. You know, I am here to live an easeful life, you know? And then one other one given to me by a friend of mine named Orla was you are very easy to love. Mm -hmm. 
And those two things really helped me just be like, okay, we're going to spin the wheel a little bit and just see if we can put it down. If it doesn't work and it still needs attention, so be it. But let's just see. Is this who I have to be anymore? Maybe not. It's like nourish yourself on top of all the hard work you're doing. You know, you can also do that. And that was such a beautiful reminder. And it feels so light to embrace that. Yeah. And it's just been wild. I mean, through my health journey, I've been steadily gaining weight rapidly, like in a way that makes no medically logical sense, right? Nobody had an answer about that. And I've also, I was fatigued to like a debilitating point. And ever since I just made that decision, I've been losing weight equally rap- rapidly. You know, it's, I'm not doing anything differently other than thinking differently. It's just like, all right, bye. Well, we were protecting you for a bit. Have a good one. Right. And my energy is back. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like I'm cleaning my house. I'm going to the store. I'm just like bopping around, live, laugh, love, you know, like things that I was not able to do at all just because it was the time was right it was time to let it go you know and, and even my therapist passion. yeah and my therapist and the last session that we had I walked in and she was like oh you're different now mm-hmm. you know and we spent four years together and she um you know she we always talked about astrology in session she's very like into all that shit too so she was like the yeah. perfect match for me and she was like you're different do you think you need me anymore and I said no I don't mm-hmm. So we, we scheduled one out for a month out from that one, just in case, you know, just to check in and be like, still good, still good. Cool. But yeah, very interesting, like four years, man. And I'm like, oh, huh. <laughs> four years that you need it. Like it's part of your journey. I think yeah. we come into, you know, there's many roles that we slide into, either we want it or not consciously, unconsciously. And then sometimes having the awareness of like, I think I'm being pulled or something different mm-hmm. and we might not know how it looks like or what's gonna click but just try it out I think when when you allow yourself to try to be open to certain things again not not saying that allow yourself to try you'll be healthy all the time but mm-hmm. just being curious and being compassionate and just seeing how it is like step by step and it's just it opens it can make space for the new to come yeah, because the body is a living thing that is separate from our beingness, you know, and at the beginning, we were not friends. <laughs> we we didn't know how to talk to each other or, you know, and I didn't have any level of trust that my body was here to support me, you know, and it's about building that relationship and everybody's relationship is going to look different. Because it's like, you know, we're all different people with different bodies and different spirits, you know, it's all different. But there was just a lot of, do you remember how you used to feel? Do you remember how you used to act? Can you set these things down? And also like in tandem with this, like I've learned that I'm autistic, you know, I've known that I have ADHD for a long time. But when I had that moment of everything coming back, I lost my ability to mask. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I can't like put on the show anymore. And that's a good thing, you know, because it's a coming home, but it's just like, so I just can't believe how fast it happened. Like all of a sudden I'm like, no, this is how I was as a very young child now. Like (laughs) it's very cool. (laughs) Right. It's like the, the, the condition of what we didn't even know were conditioned. Yeah. Yeah. It's and just so like cute. thinking back, like, oh, you know, I was so perfect in school. You know, I got perfect grades, perfect everything. And it wasn't until halfway through college when my grades were no longer like a coping mechanism to get love from my family that I started to struggle with, you know, um, executive functioning and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, what the fuck is going on, man? Like, never had trouble with this before. But it was like, the first whisperings of this isn't even how you operate. Like, this is all bullshit. This is all a facade that you've been putting on. And to now understand how much unnecessary stress I was putting myself under just to, you know, perform something that might make me be 
quote unquote, good enough to somebody Mm -hmm. else. Very much undefined heart healing, (laughs) you know? Yeah. And so many people, we live in those roles that we think we need to be. And we Mm -hmm. keep it up for as long as our, hey, our body seems like nothing, nothing is whispering at us or nothing that we want to see. Because a lot of times, always looking back, there are more to the picture than what we're aware of. And just noticing what are the parts of you that are wanting to come out and the other parts like I'm done I don't want to do this anymore and then you know piecing it together it's again there is no time frame it's it's a journey but it's so it's also I think it's helpful to look back and have the language for oh yeah this is what I used to do this is what I'm doing now Mm -hmm. because it just it makes it more real in a way tangible like yeah I'm not I'm not just being weird because so often when we feel disconnected or we feel that we're we're not belonging, it always comes back to what is wrong with me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, most of the time, it's not that something's wrong with you. It's either you're coping with something, or yeah, there are so many other layers underneath. Yeah, or you're experiencing someone's projection of like, oh, yes. you know, like in. If I think about my childhood and all the things that I had to do to be perceived as normal, especially in, I grew up in Northern Minnesota. So that's small town, very Eurocentric, you know, like normal is a very specific thing. <laughs> <Up there. laughs> you know, if you're not hunting and you're not playing sports and you're not whatever, whatever, you know, like, you know, so a child that was very loud, very explosive, very physically animated, who couldn't really make eye contact when she ordered food, you know, all this shit that I just had to like force myself to do, right? Um, was all a projection of my parents' fear of not being accepted by their community, you know, that they were just putting on a child. <laughs> like, can you fucking be normal? And it's like, well, this is normal for me yeah (laughs) you know so much compassion for you know (laughs) the inner child (laughs) who was trying to understand and I can also see because when I was going through therapy I was like oh this is all that happened to me this is why I'm the way I had a lot of like resentment towards my parents Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of love but also resentment and also looking for it it's like they didn't know anything right they were trying to cope and they were trying to protect me, even though that damaged me more. But again, being a parent, I, I have no kids yet, but I feel like no matter what I do, I'm probably going to traumatize them because that's just life. Yep. Yep. You know, I think, you know, I have two children and they're both manifestors like me. So that's kind of interesting, but <laughs> um, we can not escape harming our children in some way because we only know what we know. You know, we have no idea what's going to be the thing that sticks in their spirit that they have to like then later heal about, you know, but what we can do is not hurt them in the same way, you know, and we can, like, I know I already have one of my kiddos in occupational therapy because I learned (laughs) and I see that he is neurodivergent and he needs help. So, you know, I didn't get any kind of access like that. You know, it was like fucking act neurotypical and and go, (laughs) you know? So, yeah, I mean, I think about like the idea of being somebody who is like a curse breaker in the lineage, right? And a big part of that for me, you know, once I worked through the anger and the hurt and the abandonment and all of these things there, there was this clarity of like, okay, all of these things I felt, they felt in some way, you know, I can see that my father figure did not get to express any emotions other than rage, you know, and if that was never allowed, what tools did he have, you know, and I can see like, the expectations placed upon my mother to have a perfect body, 
you know, and just, you can see where it just like travels all the way back and like the threat of poverty in my maternal line, just how strong and how far it goes back. I got really into ancestry research and I'm just like, oh my God, (laughs) we're done. (laughs) You know? Um, So it really does take going through the full gambit of all of those things, because if you try to bypass your own self and go straight to, well, they didn't know any better and I just need to forgive them. Exactly. Well, that, no, it's not no, going to work. It'll not work not up here, work yeah. in your head for sure. But, it, you know, and I did try that in the very beginning because, you know, if you know enough about psychology, you're like, well, here's where I should be and I'm going to go ahead and be there. <laughs> yes. But I think that's a big part of why I kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker because my body was like, baby, we got to feel these emotions. Mm, yes. Because there's a I, I'm reaching my there. capacity to store them in here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting stuff for sure. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like the process needs to happen. Mm -hmm. It's something that I'm like, Oh, I hate to do a process. Why can't I get better already? (laughs) Like I'm I'm like, why am I, I like, I had a story that I was holding on to that. I was a very weak, sick child, Mm -hmm. but there were times that I was thriving and I'm like, Oh, but now I'm back in that pattern of being sick. So I'm like, but I'm doing all the right things. I know what is healthy, quote right. unquote. But it wasn't healthy for me. It wasn't mm-hmm. what I needed. I needed to process a lot of shit that was bottled up because I was told not to feel. I was too emotional, so don't feel. And I've shared this before in a podcast where like, I was emotionally stunted for a few years. Like, I would see something and I'm like, I feel like I want to feel something. But I blocked that for so long that yeah. I was numb. And I think feeling numb is so much more scarier than not, than yeah, mm. than feeling pain. Numb. It's just like, whoa, something's going on there. <laughs> like I, I gotta yeah. look in. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I what I saw a meme or a tweet or something the other day that was like, me healing is not linear. <laughs> yeah. Me when healing is not linear. <gasps> Because conceptually totally makes sense. But when you're in it, you're like, fuck me, fuck this. I want to be done. <laughs> you're allowed to be there. I think it's important. That's why like toxic positivity is toxic because you are allowed mm-hmm. to be in those spaces. You're allowed to feel all the anger and break some stuff and you know, whatever you need at that moment. Yeah, yeah. It's all allowed. Yep. How has for you you talked about being neurodivergent and like when did you find out about it and how has like learning about these terms help you also like process better and understand your needs yeah well I didn't come into my own realization of ADHD until college when things started falling apart for me in terms of being able to finish assignments um but my my middle brother has always had ADHD and in a way that was obvious, right? Because, you know, they talk about how um, people who are assigned male at birth present ADHD in such like a a more Boy. obvious way. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just didn't, we were so different that I'd never thought about it. And I was so able to like complete things and was really whatever, but there were so many signs along the way. I was never able to keep my room clean, not because like I was purposefully being messy, but because I would get so distracted by playing with the next toy that I would forget that my mom even asked me to do that, you know, like things like that. So becoming an adult, starting to realize that, okay, I'm not necessarily doing things the same way that other people were right and so then I get diagnosed and I start to understand oh okay so (laughs) this is why I leave a paper until the night before (laughs) it doesn't matter if it's 20 pages I'm doing it at midnight you know (laughs) like that's why I can't do that that's why like the most uh, prominent symptom for me is object permanence so if I clear a text message like I opened it without responding that's gone now in the ether (laughs) I'll never remember unless they ping me again you know or if there's like really important paperwork that I have to do if I put it in a drawer it no longer exists my my like my brain does not hold on to that and that started to make 
a lot of things make sense. Like in my conflicts and relationships where people would be like, you never reach out to me. Do you care about me? And it's like, it, it happens with things that are so important. It's never about an expression of care, you know, or importance at all. It's just like, my brain just can't do that shit, man. So, and then coming into the business space, the online business space and you know, you're there for three seconds and you've consumed all this advice that is so contrary to anybody who works in a way that is non neurotypical at all. And, you know, that just started leading me down the path of astrology, down the path of human design, where I started to be like, all right, wow. Okay. Here's all these reasons. If I put ADHD aside, if I put that label aside and I just look at my human design chart, here's all these reasons why traditional online marketing doesn't look for, work for me. You know, the undefined G center, you want me to have a brand that never changes? No, <laughs> no. You want me to do just one thing? No, I'm not going to niche. <laughs> Who asked? Oh you know. gosh, we could go on this conversation. I think we might have already in one of the business chats. I think funny. we did. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Well, not really funny, but it's just like society. And I know it's also in the process of deconditioning of you know, being more open to the diversity, like really, because they talk about diversity, but they don't know how to deal with it. They mm -hmm. will say like, you're lazy if you don't do X, Y, and Z. And mm -hmm. all that, it becomes things that we ingrain within ourselves. And it becomes a part of our narrative thinking that, well, it's my fault that my room is messy. It's my, when it's not. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love human design and astrology and all these other tools that point out the reasons. Yeah. Of Hey, this might be, this is how you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's just it. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say something. It'll come back. Oh yeah. And I think it's tough, especially online because everybody's talking from their own perspective. And especially if someone has a business account, they're trying to speak from a place of authority. So it's not necessarily like here's what works for me. It's like, this is the way that this should be done. And, <laughs> you know, or if you can't do this, you should hire someone to do it for you. Now, on the one hand, nothing against hiring staff at all, you know, and if it's something you really want to be happening in your business, hell yeah, hire somebody, whatever, all for that. But if it's like, oh, you're not doing it this way, you should hire someone to do it for you. That I have a problem with because there's like a space there where it's like, or you could explore what your natural rhythms are, you know? Yeah. And it's really like kind of a crash course in, can you trust yourself? Yes, that you know? is, it's a crash course. I think it's interesting because when we, you know, taking these messages and it triggers something in us, we might not be able to pinpoint what it is until we go through our own crash course. It's like, oh yeah, I am not meant to be working all the time. I cannot pose five times a day or like take someone's pose and like re, you know, reword a couple of things of it. And then, you know, there's so many strategies out there that doesn't work for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yep. And just being in that place, I'm like, it's so liberating to say, no, that's not how I work. That doesn't work for me. I release, yeah. I release that. Yeah. And I think too, another like facet of that learning for me was like, you can really love somebody and how they show up and how they do their work. But the way you work might be totally different. Just because you love the way someone else shows up doesn't mean that you're a natural fit to work together. Doesn't mean that you should be modeling the way you work after the way they work. You know, like that can be really hard to discern because you're like, wow, I love how they're showing up. But then that's not right for you. Yes, discernment and discernment in all areas of life, but especially since we're talking about business, mm -hmm. we want success, we want to help people, and then we get blinded by the noise of like, this is what you do, and then you'll get to pay your bills, you get to, and then we buy into the illusion, especially when we're feeling stressed out, insecure, like, oh, you launched something, better keep it going, you know, get sales every day. And I found myself mm -hmm. doing that, and like, I recently shared a journal and I found myself like oh ooh, being pulled to the old patterns like I need to do more I need to like I'm not getting a lot of sales and I'm like wait you know <laughs> I don't work 24 7 and expecting my business to be like this cash cow that I can just like milk whenever I need I'm like no I'm just gonna show up whenever I feel 
good, Mm -hmm. but it took years to get to that point where I'm like, I'm not going to fight my body anymore. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm just going to follow it. Yeah. Yeah. I think (laughs) that's still something I am on the journey with coming, coming to terms with being comfortable with the manifesto creation cycles for me, you know, like I have come a long way and I'm mostly there, but you know, I recently launched a Patreon, right. To be like, okay, I don't have the energy to be constantly creating on Instagram. That's not really supporting me financially. Right. So I was like, I'm going to move over to Patreon and you're going to get random shit, man. Like, here's a list of things you could get. I got no idea what's coming out of here. (laughs) And, you know, I have 11 patrons so far and it's been really a deep deconditioning to not feel like I have to constantly be posting. You know, I didn't post anything for almost the whole month of October. And I was like, everybody's going to unsubscribe, you know, but why am I there? But to craft an audience that accepts that my creation comes in cycles comes in bursts and then there's quiet and then there's burst you know so you know I think I lost maybe two patrons Uh, I had 13 now I have 11 and I was like oh well that wasn't too bad you know it's just like this trust fall in a way that yes I can show up when there's something that wants to come out like that can be safe I can let that be safe Yeah, yeah you know and it, yeah. oh, I love that you pointed that out because even though your mind is like, if that happens, it happens. Going through it, it's almost like we are going through our own recalibrating process. Our brain knows, mm-hmm. oh, mindset shift, we know it. But unless we go through that ourselves, because I'm still going it. Sometimes like with anything I launch or share, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to like get more people. How do? And then I'm like, wait, just, you know, this is coming from angst, fear. And when every time I show up with this, no matter how crafted my post is, in the past, I've done it. I'm like, the energy doesn't feel good. It doesn't land with people. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm able to trust, I'm always being surprised by opportunities. And then that makes me realize we can't control it. And like in the business world, there's a false sense of control. Do mm-hmm. this to make sure that you get all those subscribers. Do this to make sure that you get it. We can't. Yep. We can't without burning ourselves out. And I, I see a little bit of a transition where people are embracing more flow and ease how long it's going to take for every business to be like that who knows but I see the beginning and I'm very hopeful that could be my success yeah (laughs) yeah there are very few people for whom it is authentic and correct to be like on 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 here we go baby like for some people shorts and I bless it if that is your like (laughs) oh if that really lights you up you know like do it man like somebody's got (laughs) yeah but for the rest of us it it's not that, you know, I think about how, you know, 70% of the population has an undefined heart. You know, we're all out here trying to prove that we're worthy to be here, mm-hmm. you know, and how much of the online business space is coming from that energy. Look how many times I can post in a week. Look how polished this video is, you know, look at these free things I can give to you, you know, like I'm worthy, work with me, work with me. I'm worth it. You know, fuck that. <laughs> I am so much more attracted to the idea of like, here is my full, very erratic, like (laughs) strange expression. If you love it, come hang with me. If you don't, totally cool. Go hang with someone else that lights your fire. Like, let's just have that authentic relationship. You know, I don't want to fucking sell you all the time. I don't care. If you want to buy my shit, buy it. (laughs) But like, (laughs) I'm not here to convince you. And we're not here to be liked by everyone. As no. much as like logically we understand, yes, rejection hurts. Like, you know, but honestly, even you don't like everyone. Like, don't right. don't try to like don't force that. And the obsession on like follower count too is like because followers don't necessarily equate to sales. I'd rather yes. have 10 people following me who really give a shit about the work that I make. Then like a hundred thousand. Also, that sounds like a nightmare anyway. Like fucking dear God. <laughs> like, do you even know those people? Like who are those strangers that are just like approving in quotes or just approving like that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yes. And as a fifth line being, the more <laughs> eyes that are on me, the more I'm like, oh God, I know that most of you are not perceiving me in a way that's correct. You know? <laughs> yes. Let's talk about projections. I you know, I haven't introduced a lot of human design to my audience yet, but mm-hmm. you know, 
you're a manifester. <laughs> and three, uh, five, emotional yeah. manifester. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with human design, and then we can lead on to projections. Yeah. So I've been studying astrology for six years. That was my first first kind of love. And my best friend of 20 years is a self-projected projector. And <laughs> she moved in with me for a while when my son was born. And she just kept being like, I really just think that human design, like you'd be into it. Like maybe consider checking it out. I don't know. Da, da, da. You know, <laughs> and she's one of the very few people I allow to give me advice because <laughs> she knows how to do it without pissing me off, you know? <laughs> So she's like, oh, maybe you might do this. So the first time I look at a chart, I was like, fuck this. Now. What am I even looking at? Yeah, like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I'm like, this looks very like, I don't know. When you come, become so familiar with like the astrology chart, that starts to feel really warm and really personal mm -hmm. to you. And I looked at human design and I was like, I feel like I'm looking like an alien tablature right now. What are we looking at? So I rejected it initially. But it was not very long after that, that I just started casually poking around, you know, um, and this is a year after my start of astrology studying. So I'm coming up on about five years of that. And I started with self-study, bought some books, started to check it out. Then I found Jess Fields and I was like, ah, uh, hello, fellow <laughs> three, five, very warm creature. And I was like, this is great. Love you. And started to learn more from her, started to take little workshops here and there, and then eventually signed on to the advanced reader training to study in depth for a whole last calendar year. So, <laughs> you know, once I made the conscious choice to dive in, that was it. There's no going back. And some people will look at human design and say it's not as complex as astrology or vice versa you know, and I'm just like, no, baby, like, these are both very, very, like, huge systems of intelligence that, you know, like, the more, every time you think you're done, it reveals another layer, and another layer, and another layer, and I'm just like, wow, I get to hold these two universes in my hands, when I meet with people, and be like, here, let's talk about your personality, and things you might like for a career, let's talk about your body, and things that might be going on somatically, you know, you can use astrology somatically, but human design is so much more inherently like, let's Specific. check out the physical body, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. So as a three five, in the five, you deal with projections. And we talk about like really quick house analogy. There are six signs. The first is the foundations. They're known as the investigator in human design terms. Second is known as the, the hermit because they're kind of dancing on top of the foundation, doing their own thing. They have natural gifts. People call them out for it. So they do receive projections, but they project their natural abilities out. Mm -hmm. Third line is martyr, known as the martyr because they're here to just try do everything. They're going up and down the stairs, testing things out. Fourth, they're like in a balcony, they're connecting. They're just like, oh, let's maybe connect some people, make things happen. Fifth line, they have projections, but as opposed to projecting their abilities out, they receive projections from people. And then six line, finally, the person that's on top of the roof, looking at the whole house, maybe looking somewhere else, what can we do, improve? But today we're going to talk about the fifth line and how Kat experiences those outer projections from people mm -hmm. all the time. How does that feel? <laughs> Not great. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So with a third line, with the fifth line, third line is to fuck around and find out, right? We only learn via mistakes. There is no other learning process for us. And I often joke that if I ever write an autobiography, <laughs> the working title would be, I get knocked down, but I get up again <laughs> and again and again and again and again, you know, because <laughs> we have that resiliency to just keep going. But with the fifth line paired with the third line, I don't think I've ever made a single mistake that wasn't seen by at least one person, if not many, <laughs> you know, the mistake making process is very, very public. So that's definitely something to get acquainted with and over time start to become familiar with. But the more visible I am online, the more I notice the projections. Before I was so active online and active in like a I don't know, quote unquote, professional setting. 
I don't feel like a very professional being, but you know, you know what I mean? Um, I didn't feel like I noticed it as much because it is my unconscious, right? But people will come into my inbox and say things to me that are so far from my character. And I'm like, oh, that's what it is. Holy shit. You know, everything from like really positive to really negative. Like people will project really positive things on us too. And they say, wow, I know that you're going to be great at this. I know you are. And <laughs> for us with fifth lines, we have to really practice discernment because it feels so good to solve somebody's problems. It does. So when we're not in our discernment, you know, I've said yes to things I had no fucking idea how to do. And then my third line was like, all right, here we go. We're going to figure it out (laughs) before it needs to be done. We're going to learn how to do it, (laughs) which is highly stressful. And I don't recommend it, but it's also kind of fun. If you are a third line, (laughs) I bless it. If you're a third line, it's fine. (laughs) But, you know, we have to say, you know, can I do this? Do I want to do this? And do I want to do this for that person? Because those things are all important. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's been very interesting. I've had, I worked with a business mentor for a very short period of time. And um, not too long after we agreed to work together, you know, she was my coach. I had kind of an ADHD meltdown. And what that looks like, if you're not familiar, is that everything is a much bigger and exaggerated problem than it actually is in real life. You're like, oh my God, it's taking me three months to answer anybody's emails. No, it's not. But it feels like that in that moment. Like things are really big like that. And I was like having a total freak out. And I felt her energy toward me change in that moment. And when I'd post practice offerings, she never interacted with them anymore and things like that. So I finally got up the courage to say, hey, did your perception of me change that day? And she said, yes, it did. And that I was not meant, clearly not meant to do the work that I was trying to do because I, of the way I'd felt about it on that one day when I had that one meltdown, you know, she saw me in that space and took that as my whole truth and the whole truth of the universe for me, you know? And (laughs) I was like, oh, no, (laughs) you know, I was doing VA work at the time. And I was like, you know, I tried to express, and she's like kind of in a human design, right? I tried to express like, well, as a manifester, if I'm in the mood to do it, I, and, and that was a 12, 22, I was like, if I'm in the mood to do it and I want to do it, I can do it. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, but I, it was never able to be corrected. Once there is like a projection, I find that it's very difficult to undo that. And it like got to the point of where she was like, we need to disconnect on social media. My work is going to start focusing on high earners. And I think that's going to be really triggering to you. And I was like, what in the fuck, man? (laughs) Like, where are you getting that from? Like huge assumptions, huge projections. Like, I'm sorry, we never had a conversation about that. You have no idea where my money mindset is. And also it's like, weird for you to be like taking my autonomy there like I can choose who I'm following and whose content I'm consuming very strange because she could either couldn't see oh it's okay you know it's all all part of the journey but (laughs) either she couldn't see or couldn't say you are triggering me you know which really felt like that was what was going on and I don't know if she couldn't see it or couldn't say it or if it was a combination but that was something and it was recent and I felt pretty good about it because for the first, one of the first times I didn't take it on, you know, I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, this is not true for me. Here are my truths. You know, you're welcome to disconnect. You should and can have your boundaries, but you know, this is, this is, it's almost like you were coaching her like honest to fucking God. Well, and it doesn't matter because she never read my response. (laughs) But, you know, I I still, I got what I needed out of that by seeing myself be like, no, I hear that. I I hear what you're saying, but it's not mine. This is not mine. This is so powerful, even if you don't have a five, because like when I think about projections, it's so fascinating. I think we're always projecting towards Mm -hmm. each other, but when you have a five in your line, 
I feel like that energy feels stronger. It might activate sort of parts of you of like, do I want to step into this projection? Do I want to honor this? And then having the clarity and the language doesn't mean you will prevent those projections from happening as said example, <laughs> but you can be more aware of like, do I want to take this on or do I want to believe that this is about me? Do I want to believe her version of the projection? Right, right. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of like identity exploration, even if you have an undefined G center, an undefined identity center, which for those listening, that means your identity is in flux all the time. You know, it's very fluid. You're always changing. Even if you have that, there are parts of you that are solid. There are parts of your morals, your beliefs that are what they are. Even if they end up shifting, they still have moments of stasis. You know, and at any point in time, you can say, I know who I am because I've spent a lot of time with myself and I've spent a lot of time exploring that, exploring what I give a shit about and understanding what my wounds are and where my triggers are. You know, you can try to put that on me, but it's not mine. And sometimes the positive projection can be helpful. You know, if someone projects upon me, I know that you can do X, Y, Z. Then I can sit with that for a minute. And be like, okay, why do I feel like I can't? And that can be an interesting place to explore. Like, is it because I don't feel worthy of that? Or is it because I don't want to? You know, it becomes kind of like a little playground in a way. Yeah, it's just all these things that we feel when we're able to, it becomes an invitation to look deeper. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it helps to have someone go there with us because it could be too much. Other times you can do it yourself or with friends. Like there's so many ways to access those parts of us. It could be through play. It could be through like adventure. It could be through a little bit more like quote unquote serious work, like therapy sessions, you know, anything that works. Like don't feel limited. That has to be one thing or the other. Yep. (laughs) Oh, that was, oh, so when you learn about projections, and you reflect back on it, did it make sense for everything that you, I guess, growing up? Like, did you notice the projections that was being put on you constantly? It's so much easier to notice projections in hindsight Mm -hmm. than it is in the moment because it's in that unconscious position. Like, you know, I have quite a few friends that are five ones and they're like, this is happening right now. This is happening right now. And I'm like, huh, okay. (laughs) But I'm like, okay, three weeks ago, this happened. Oh, <laughs> you know? um, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting because with the third line, all of these experiences that I'm having that are like learning curves in the realm of projection just inform my third line, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just like teaching me more about how to be in relationship, teaching me more about healthy boundaries, about conscious communication, about what does it mean to speak your needs? What does it mean to tell somebody no without losing your temper? Mm. (laughs) Because that was like initially, like, especially as a manifester, don't fucking tell me what to do and don't fucking tell me who I am ever. You know, (laughs) I can go to that place of being like, yeah, yeah, you want to (laughs) go? So, you know, there, there was like a time, right? Like had to explore that and then had to learn like, okay, how do I now say no to this projection in a way that's not spitting it right back onto the other person in a way that's like venomous, you know, Mm -hmm. how can I say no and just gently put that back, (laughs) you know, all things that we're learning, you know, and the third line is, you know, one of the themes is bonds made and bonds broken. So that's a huge part of the deal, figuring out what it means to be in relationship what it means to say goodbye, what it means to say hello, you know, like all this shit that we're here to just check out and then be like, okay, here you go, collective. I figured that out, (laughs) you know? Should I do this now? Maybe not. Maybe another day. Okay, bye. (laughs) I learned this. Take it if it helps. (laughs) That's kind of the intention, right? Just take it if it works. Like just because it's so interesting. This is probably a tangent, but I've seen other people show up. It's like, I'm a three. I did this so you don't have to. But I'm like, but some people also have a three. They're also here to explore. So you can't take that away from people. Those who want to take it, yes. But you are not in control of how somebody receives it. You cannot force them to receive it. 
Yeah. And also like as a third line, it's like, you're here to check it out and then give it to your own collective. I may not be in your collective, you know? So I'll see your experiment and I'll be like, all right, I see that you're saying that's how to do it. I don't think you're right. Or, yeah. that, <laughs> you know, or like, that's not the way it's going to be for me, especially if we're talking about relationships, right? Like how many accounts exist that advise you on how to have a healthy relationship and how many different takes are there and many of them are right in their own way so it's like which one is the correct nuanced path for you to be on oh this can be so choose your adventure right <laughs> yeah like those <laughs> choose books your adventure. yeah <laughs> basically there is no wrong path it all leads somewhere and everyone has a way that works for them just figure out your own right yep that- I'm like, yep, mic drop. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you sum it up. But I want to get a little bit about your expertise. As I guess, let's say from different angles, someone who is interested in travel work or in wanting to navigate, how can they get started? Or do you recommend anything? What is it? How do you initiate them? <laughs> yeah, well, I think trauma work is, you got to be really careful with that because There are a lot of people who are doing quote unquote trauma work that are causing harm instead because they haven't explored their own shadow. They haven't like really figured out how to sit in the dark with somebody without it also becoming, you know, getting too tied into what they experience as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to sit with somebody when they're really in a difficult place, you have to be able to be unbiased you have to be able to just hold it, you know, and it's so important if you're not someone who's trained, you know, in psychology, who is a therapist to also be, you know, I'm always like my work works best in tandem with a therapist. I can't ever be that for you. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going back to school for psychology. So maybe one day, oh. but like at this time, I'm like, I can't be that for you. So if you need that additional support, please have that on hand. What I can do for you is I can hear you. I can see you clearly. I can reflect you back to you. I can give you some resources that may help, but mostly I can just walk next to you while you do it yourself. Cause that's really, you can't fix anybody else, you know? So yeah, I just think it's something to really think about if that's something you're interested in working, a field you're interested in working in is, it is, um, very nuanced, very complicated. It can be very heavy and it can be very light, you know, but it's a big undertaking. Yes. Thank you. This is such a beautiful input. And tell me a little bit about astrology. I know you also have astrology reading. I do. Yeah. Coaching. <laughs> yeah. I've been studying astrology for six years, human design for five. I don't do standalone astrology readings anymore. I do standalone human design readings, but I bring them both in when I do one-on-one coaching Mm -hmm. and, you know, we bring in both of those things. We bring in music, we bring in like kind of processing via art. We bring in like inner child meditations, you know, I take on very few one-on-one clients here because I have not enough energy for (laughs) a shit ton of people to be doing that with, but like, yeah, you come in, we have a talk and then I like craft you your own personalized thing that we're going to do not everybody is going to benefit from astrology. Not everybody's going to benefit from like journaling prompts. You know, it's like a very, what, what do you need right now? You know, but I like to have all of those things in my pocket because you never know what's going to be the thing, you know, you never know what's going to be the thing that you say that just like knocks a crack in something. And they're like, yeah, oh. that's like, Ooh, this is what you need. It's, it kind of activates your toolbox. <laughs> like there yeah. you go, like Felix magic bag. Like this is what mm-hmm. you need right now. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, more recently I've started to really get into like the death work sphere and it's starting to sort of take over as my primary, my primary interest because not to be too like, I don't know, quote unquote, woo. I don't like that word, but I haven't found another one yet to be too like (laughs) in between worlds. But I really love the idea of supporting someone as they are dying and then still being there on the other side because I can hear and I can see. And I've always been able to do that since I was little, you know, like 
see things that aren't here, whatever. And I just like find that so like, mm, you really need that. I feel like you might really need that because who knows what the after place is like for us. And a lot of people are scared, you know? I was going to say that. It doesn't have yeah. to be a terrifying experience. It's going to happen to all of us. And, it, you know, we can talk about it. And nothing more supportive than having someone who's like, there you go. Like, kind of take your hand. Like, you don't have to do it by yourself. Yeah. And I think that everybody deserves the opportunity to have, like, a quote-unquote good death where they have someone who is just there, who is just making sure that everything is okay, who is there to just be that calm, energetic presence, you know, and who can then support family members afterwards. Like, here's all the things that you need to do here. I'm here to sit with you in your grief, you know, like we're getting better at it as a society to kind of start looking at death in a way that's less terrifying, but it still is very needed. Like, can we talk about this more? Can we explore it more? Can we explore it as potentially a joyful experience Mm. you know because there's a lot about the human experience that is very hard yeah and a lot of death workers yeah and a lot of death workers report that like their clients as they're passing it's joy Mm. you know and people will say they see their husband that they're coming to get me you know like I've missed you you know like that kind of shit like it doesn't have to be so scary yeah beautiful I'm refrain obsessed. <laughs> yeah thank you for sharing that I mean I'll include your information too so that people can find out more about it but I was <laughs> also curious about boundaries I know you t- touched on it a little bit more but for anyone who's aware that they're dealing with a projection or just boundaries for anyone we could use more of them <laughs> how have you been working with this yeah so my boundaries work started when I was going to Al-Anon some years ago, because I had a partner that was active in addiction and um, that was new for me. <laughs> and so I started to learn about boundaries and what it means to stay in your own power and stay in your own sovereignty while understanding that no matter how much you love somebody or care about somebody's opinion, perspective, being, you cannot change what they're doing. A lot of people think that boundaries are like, you can't do this. That's not what it is. (laughs) It's okay. If you do this, I have to do this. You know, taking that responsibility back of being like, okay, this is something I've expressed that I'm not okay with. And if you do this, then I am going to have to leave your space. Or if you do this, I'm not going to be able to talk to you anymore. You know? And in terms of online projection, I'm just like thinking about when people have tried to pull me into like some kind of accountability process, when the thing leading up to that was not like, there was nothing that happened. You know, it was someone deciding that they were hurt by something I never said, (laughs) you know, like, all these kind of like contextual pieces that were like not matching up to each other. And it was really healing for me to hear from people. I was like seeking out for counsel, you know, I was like, Hey, am I in the wrong? Did I do this? You know, am I just like totally missing where I like fucked up? Like, can you reflect this back to me for them to be like, you don't have to be so worried about being soft because you already are very soft. Of course, as a manifester, I was like, (laughs) you know, (laughs) but, you know, for someone to say, you know, like, it's okay for you to say, I am not going to engage with this. You know, it's my responsibility to do my own personal healing work, to do my own accountability work. If I don't feel like a process I'm being asked to engage in is coming from like a place from people who care about me or where it's going to be like genuine and supportive and whatever, I don't have to say yes. I can take that responsibility and do it on my own time and in my own way. The reactivity of the internet sometimes makes it seem like, well, if you don't 
do what these people are asking you to do, then you're wrong and you're this and you're that. And it's like, not fucking that, man. (laughs) Especially if it's a stranger on the internet who was like, you did this and you did that and it's projection, you know? And that's why it's so important to have people in your life who will tell you when you are fucking up. Because we're we're human. We all have spots like that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, You know, we we need need to have community. Yeah. And also have the courage to set those boundaries because as you were talking, like, yeah, it takes courage, but also the inner work to know what you need. Because we have been so conditioned to put our needs aside and, you know, pretend that we're okay or things don't bother us. But like, if something does, step into it and lean on to others and consult <laughs> mm. you know we don't need to figure everything ourselves we don't yeah because community is so important but the thousands of people that you're connected to on the internet are not your community in that way you know they're not the people that you see day to day they're not the people who will call you on your shit because they don't know who you are you yeah, know, they, they know who your internet persona is. Even if you feel like, I feel that I am like really being myself on the internet. Even if you feel that way, you have no idea what they are getting from that and what they think you are, who they think you are, you know? So yeah, <laughs> I feel, <laughs> feel a lot of that lately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Like mic drop right there. Well, <laughs> I wanted to wrap this up with some rapid fire questions. <laughs> oh God, I'm ready. <laughs> no pressure. What's the best compliment you've ever received? Uh, you make me feel really safe. A book that's changed your life? Mm, I would have to be The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. And then subsequently after that, I believe it's when the body says no, the hidden cost of stress by Gabor Mate. What does coming home mean to you? Remembering. What do you want more of? Joy. Advice, words for your younger self. You are not too weird. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) And one day we're really fucking cool. (laughs) I love it because, you know, what is your your Instagram handle? (laughs) (laughs) Weird wellness. (laughs) I I think about that like when I do inner child work and I do like visualizations and stuff, every time she's just like, you got tattoos and piercings, man. You cut all your hair off. And I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I never got to do, I could never cut my hair. I couldn't color it, you know, nothing like came from a very, I don't know what it was. Like my mom was like, you, people would kill for long blonde hair like that. You can't cut it. And I was like, mm, hate this for me, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> to think about seeing my younger self and just know that I've like made this huge stylistic change. <laughs> Lord, she would just think I was cool as hell. <laughs> oh. Yes, yes. I, and where else can people find you? Oh, Lord. Yeah, I'm pretty much under Weird Wellness everywhere. My website is weirdwellness.co, weird.wellness on Instagram. You know, I'm just like living, laughing, loving on the internet. <laughs> and like, I have a Patreon. It is, you'll be shocked to learn it's Patreon slash Weird Wellness. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't so, see that yeah, coming. <laughs> I know. Yeah. If you go to my website, you'll find everything else. So. Is there any current offers and programs you would like to share? Um, not right now. The only active thing right now is my Patreon. I know I'm going to be doing another round of human design as an anti-capitalist framework with my manifester pal, Kelsey Rose Tortoris. Um, but we haven't decided on a date yet. Coming soon to an internet near you. <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Kat. Any final words you want to share? Not final words, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> that sounded weird. I was like, I wonder. <laughs> I get off this call and simply deceased, you know. <laughs> no, no. But thank you so much for having me. Um, it's been really fun to talk with you. And you know, it always is. But 
<laughs> I really appreciate um, your time today getting to talk. Thank you, Kat, for just your wonderful reflections on being human, healing and growing and being in the process, all of that in between as well. Yeah, talk of soon. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the whole and unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect women, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.